can an anesthetist working in his balcony and making inks and ink pens compete with companies with millions of dollars in their budget? Stay tuned to find out. Hello and welcome to Stationary Test Drive, where no tool is safe from our artful hands. My name is Vishal. This is Minjal. I'm Samir. And our artful hands have got their hands on Krishna inks today. These are the their super rich series in, we have Causal and we have Kanikonna. I'm hopefully pronouncing that right. And these are fountain pen inks. Uh, and to tell us more about it, Samir and Minjal. Uh, Krishna inks are actually a very unique product compared to most of the things we've been reviewing. Uh, they are very much a small, what we like to call in India, cottage industry. So much so that they are, uh, when we last checked, made by one person or one family. Okay. So very much a bespoke product. And I will give it a test here. Uh, are they still a single person? So from what uh, you know, we've last read, um, it's uh, developed by Dr. Sri Kumar. Uh, he's based in South India. And from what we've read in interviews uh, till date, uh, he still makes them uh, by himself. Uh, he probably has his family to help him. Yeah. And uh, he started uh, selling uh, the Krishna inks in 2010. Yeah. So he started selling them um, on eBay first. Mm -hmm. And uh, then because, uh, you know, I noticed it, you know, because lettering artists across India, especially, um, you know, really took on to, uh, you know, Krishna Inks. And there were lots of uh, influential calligraphers that started using it and, you know, um, showing it on Instagram. So that's how I came across uh, Krishna Inks. And uh, I believe that uh, the the inks that are made by Dr. Sri Kumar are now available in almost 21 countries. Mm. So it is a cottage industry, like you said, developed in India. But the popularity, obviously, over the last few years, um, you know, and rightfully so, uh, has made sure that it's available in most countries. Now. Well, I think... So go ahead, Samir. I, th I think it's a very interesting story because uh, inks have obviously been traditionally something that was a small business and something made by individuals, but it very quickly became into this kind of large industrial enterprise. And it's just, uh, it's fascinating that it's still possible for a single person to start something like this. And gain so much uh, sort of notoriety. I never really thought or even imagined that this would be just a small business. I thought they had a factory. I thought they had you know, a brand just like we see for other big brands. And and not just notoriety, but also the fact that uh, Krishna Inks is not, is not small in scale in that they, the last that I checked in 2020, an interview said that they had 50 different colors. So it's not like they have, you know, they stayed small in the, the, the product line. Speaking of colors, we have two here. We have the Kanikona, as I said, which I assume is a South Indian word for some kind of yellow. Uh, and we have the causal, which is a very nice blue. Um, and the good thing about inks is you just need very little and a bit of water. I'm using my dip pen, hunt dip pen here. Watch our episode for that. And you can mix them into a very beautiful green, which I hope they make separately because I really liked it. And you'll see it in our test drives. That's what we do every week. We test drive things, not just... Um, here on the screen, which we're doing right now, which, you know, you can use uh, these inks even with a brush and get a nice, uh, maybe not on this paper and not at this dilution. Yeah, I think it's uh, a little too dilute. It's a little brushes. too dilute for that, but we didn't dilute it during our tests. And these are, let's say, they're activated by water, of course, because they are yeah, they're, inks. Yeah, they're not uh, They're not the proof. most, yeah. And I think we all came across that, except for Minjal. Minjal, you had a different colored one, I'll keep these aside now. Uh, you had a different color than these two. Than these I two. did. I did. So uh, the ink that I had was uh, Sindur. Hmm. It's uh, it's a nice um, orange brownish color. It's hmm. a vermilion, I suppose, is the the thing that it's trying for. I um, I guess yeah, closer to that. So I used uh, the Pilot Parallel Pen, 
which uh, we've th- that was the first episode we actually uh, mm-hmm. did on the test drive and uh, i've used the rodia pad which also is an episode that uh, you know anybody who's interested in lettering and as vishal demonstrated even um, you know illustrations should mm-hmm. definitely check out uh, now i've uh, been the biggest fan of ecoline inks Mm. but this one really took which me which we have also covered <laughs> yes yes <laughs> correct uh these these inks really took me by surprise purely because you know they are they're really vibrant mm. and uh, you know uh, dr sri kumar i read in one of his interviews that he actually makes inks uh, for calligraphers mm. so you know you i don't know if the camera can see it but you know you can really uh, see that when you finish a stroke it ends you know on a slightly darker you know mm. tinge or shade right and uh, he specifically makes inks that can be used for lettering artists mm. so compared to say a camlin or a sheffer or pelican you know inks um i think i'm going to buy lots of colors of krishna inks because mm. this is great for lettering but uh, i think with the with the buying all the inks we should mention one thing uh is that you should buy some kind of stiff probably butter knife <laughs> um, because uh, it's not really a problem it's just something that you know a caveat emptor uh, as in be on the lookout for when you get your krishna inks they come with this stopper and that stopper is very good for transporting the ink yeah, they're beautifully packaged they come nicely you know bundled in some foam so they don't get knocked about but that stopper is really hard to take out uh and so you do need some kind of tool usually some mm. kind of metal knife i used like a butter knife i could not even pry it open with my fingers or hands uh, be careful with that yeah i think in our experience once you get it and once you have it at home and reasonably stable you can remove that stopper yeah. and just close it uh, normally because but- like most other ink uh, pots in the world it has a membrane that sort of stops it there and that is fine for storing it the house uh but yes uh, if you are frustrated by it at the beginning uh please don't injure yourself while trying to open up <laughs> the uh, the bottle minjal did you injure yourself uh i did actually i very recently grown my nails so i did end up <laughs> chipping a nail because you know i tried to pry it open and failed but i think it's worth it for the kind of quality that you got out of it yeah. i do enjoy like you pointed out the way it sort of stops at a at a at a darker little sort of flourish almost yeah if you see all the end mm. strokes you know they have the same darker but it's very pleasing it's not you know like an unpleasant like a blob like you would have it like a top ball pen or even a bad uh, ink sometimes yeah i mean i think fountain pen and uh, calligraphy aficionados can can uh, inform us as to what the exact technical terms are i believe sheen and and things like that come into play as far as what those effects are when you write with these kind of inks yes yeah. Yeah. Good. Now also the other thing um, is you know that I was uh, I was reading uh, that um, the the three main ingredients uh, you know to ink making mm. are uh, one you know the dye um, or pigment right second the water mm-hmm. and uh, third is the solvent which uh, is actually what determines the properties of the ink okay so you know whether the ink is um, water resistant whether it's uh, water soluble or what kind of paper it works on mm-hmm. everything is determined purely by the solvent so uh, i think many ink makers will never reveal what the uh, what the solvent that they use is because that is the magical mm. ingredient yeah i'm guessing most of the pigments are fairly well known um, and different colors require either certain specific minerals or metal based compounds or certain um, you know plant based or um natural compounds for specific colors so for example if you have a, r- a red it's often based on iron if you have a blue it's often based on copper things like that so then i guess yes the it's the solvent and the particular recipe that you mix your ink with that becomes your proprietary secret right well krishna inks was maybe it was developed for calligraphers and we've seen a great example of calligraphy uh, here but uh, menzels are sort of let's say resident calligrapher we are artists and, and just uh, i have to say i really love the the thin strokes in this yeah i mean that the, the line really almost looks like it's been put down with i don't know some kind of franking tool rather than mm. well pen. we we need to thank uh, pilot for the yes, pilot parallel yes, yes. pen yeah. every calligrapher's dependable tool hmm So yes every calligrapher has a dependable tool these inks surprisingly are good if you are an illustrator uh, which is what i sort of am and that is what i did 
uh, for my test drive this week which is uh, yeah as you can see we mixed up that green before that's kind of what i got here as a happy accident um mm. i used i don't have it with me right now but i used a water brush which is like a refillable acrylic uh, painting brush which you just fill up with water and because of the sort of the backwash of that uh because i dipped into the ink well it's a nice deep ink well um i got the blue uh, i i did the yellows first <laughs> i went into the blues and i came out with this green and the second i saw it i said oh no i made a mistake but it looked so good that i thought no it it i absolutely go for it and hopefully krishna makes an ink like this i would gladly go for this like what is it shard rose i don't even know what the, the, i mean the I, name i'm is. i'm guessing they definitely make an ink that's something close to this color because they yeah. have 50 different shades yeah. or something but it is it, very easy to mix these on a palette or mix these into i i totally fill an ink we none of us used an actual fountain pen on this one which i guess in some ways it's it can be made for so i will try it with a fountain pen next but yeah the the ink obviously it mixes and washes like a watercolor it's it's not like always going to be the cleanest thing if you're doing wet and wet uh, like i was for the most part but it dries fairly quickly unlike watercolors mm. so you can do like layers in in to get more texture to dry brush things in uh, to even double you know do washes first and then fully dipped ones to get you know uh, different gradations of it um it's a good ink it's uh, i'm not used to dye based inks i'm used to pigment based inks i mm. think yeah uh, so most of the time what we're using are like uh sumi yeah. sumi and things like that. things that have more kind of grit to them more of a some kind of substrate to them this one goes down so cleanly and sort of like goes everywhere that a you're not you know like on test i wish our hands a lot but really if you use these inks for a while you are going to just have you know ink everywhere um perfectly harmless i think i don't think they're too uh, toxic in any way no um, they're not Uh, but yeah the the colors you get out of them are so vibrant um maybe even more vibrant than it's showing up on camera right now but we'll try our best for that and yeah this i i of course i finished this with a fine liner i for blacks because i didn't really have a black krishna ink on and i thought it would be cheating for me to just go in and do sumi as usual but yeah this is a long you know tradition of using there's a long tradition of using water colors and things on line art there is another long tradition of using dye based inks uh, on especially on comic art but always as an intermediate stage where you'd use that as a you know dr martin's dyes to use them as as sort of guides for then for color separators to use but yeah uh, dye based inks are not all that crazy for illustration anymore if the kind of things you get out of it are are wonderful and fascinating and i'll be glad to try more of these and to finish off our test drives mm. i came up with this mm. which is um, if if you if you look at our uh, episode on the eco linings i actually tried to do something that is spiritually similar so that i could compare the the effects mm. that the two have that was also what i did with the eco linings was also a, a diluted ink wash uh, based drawing and it was figurative i this was very enjoyable to use and uh, it was i think to to the untrained i what i came up with for with the eco linings and this would seem quite similar but they are actually quite different when you're using them um the difference technically being of course that i think the krishna inks are probably more dye based and the eco linings were definitely pigment based that is the uh, the speciality of the eco linings that they are kind of a um a water color plus ink right mm. um i definitely think that the sort of the layering that happens because of the dye based is a lot more pronounced in this one than it is in the eco linings mm. it's um the eco linings because of the pigment tend to kind of flatten out a little bit more whereas the that sort of feathering that happens and the blotting that happens here is a lot more pronounced when you diluted uh the krishnaites 
So Which, both, uh, sorry, uh, both you and Vishal actually diluted the ink yes. with water. So I used it without any water. Exactly. To get the, you know, the actual shade. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, like the eco lines, uh, you know, I think what is clear is that uh, inks can actually be used as watercolors. Yeah, I, I think, I, I don't know if your standard blue, black uh, fountain pen inks are rich enough to be used this way. Yeah. I think we are also going by... Things like the Krishna ink and the Equiline inks, which are very specifically rich in in color and pigment. Yeah, the vibrancy is just magnitudes more than what I would expect from any mm. kind of blue ink or any fountain pen ink, specific fountain pen ink. But having grown up with the standard fountain pen inks, it's just a revelation to see inks that are this vibrant. Right. Mm. I think uh, Dr. Srikumar also makes uh, fountain pens. Uh, I also read that uh, he learnt, uh, you know, a lot of ink making from his grandfather, mm. who was an um, art teacher. Okay. But he uh, also learnt a lot of the fountain pen making from um, Mr. A. C. Ramchandran uh, mm. in Calicut. Now, he uh, has been making fountain pens for several decades and uh, he has a brand called Kim and Company. Okay. So, fountain pen enthusiasts will be um, aware of this brand. Because his uh, fountain pens are supposed to be excellent. And uh, Dr. Sri Kumar uh, considers him his mentor. So maybe we try out, uh, you know, one of those fountain pens from Kim and Company. We we probably will have to try out one from Kim and Company because I believe Dr. Sri Kumar makes the pens himself. Which means that he produces maybe half a dozen a year or so yeah. and has years of a waiting list. So maybe we're not getting one of those anytime soon. Yeah. But it would be worth it. I think uh, in the meantime, his uh, inks uh, are there. I'm sure maybe if there are more people now, their inks are great. Krishna inks, they're well worth it if you're in India. If you're passing through India, please get someone to order them for you. I don't know if they're available in retail. Yeah, they are, they are available, available online through uh, international uh, stores as well. Which so, can... there is a, there's Pen World in Chennai. Um, I believe they are the ones who are actually retailing it uh, okay. across the world. Okay, but as in, you can't just go into a shop and pick these up. You have to order them. You have to order yeah. them online, yeah. I All think right. there are there are certain online uh, international online uh, stores which also... Hmm keep them so I, i'm sure people outside india can also get their hands on them well yes I, i'd say it has a other than literally just the the warning that you're going to have to deal with that mm. uh, that stopper um, and that can cause some frustration sometimes <laughs> uh, but yeah the, the quality of the ink we have absolutely nothing to complain about in fact we have only admiration to to think that uh, these are made by you know, one or a handful of people versus a, a gigantic company. And really, I they, can't see the quality difference here. No, they go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any great uh, inks that we have tried from major brands, any specialist inks that we have tried from major brands. Mm -hmm. And they're very fun to use. They're exciting to use. Your your happy accidents happen. And, you know, sometimes that's what you want in a, in a medium. Now, maybe you have had the happy accident of stumbling upon us. Uh, for the first time if you do please uh, check out inkymemo.com which is the brand that runs all of this as well as other things uh, there are transcripts of the shows that are slowly coming online uh, of we we have over 45 shows by now um, and uh, do sign up for our newsletter uh, where we also talk about stories of people who make things stationery inks things like that um, we will be back next time with more uh, fun tools and strange tools uh, and ordinary tools put to extraordinary uses just like the very ordinary sounding Krishna fountain pen inks have turned out to be extra extraordinary to use. Uh, so we'll see you next time and until then, I'm Vishal. This is Minjal. I'm Samir. And if you like this episode, you really should check out our episode on the eco linings, which are very similar to these but also quite different. Those were fun to use as well. And uh, if you like what Binjal has done, you really should look at our first episode ever, which was on the Pilot Parallel Pen. Vishal? Uh, <laughs> One is all you need sometimes. <laughs>